All right, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Wired Tight. Today we're gonna be doing a bare bones gear video. Now, I don't really do gear videos because I don't consider myself a gear person. Now, what I mean by that is, I don't really get excited about gear by itself. I get more excited about what acquiring a new piece of gear can enable me to do as a Minuteman, armed prepared citizen, LARPer, guy who trains, dirty civilian, whatever the hell you wanna call it. So, this is actually my second pistol belt setup. My first one was one of those big old padded war belts that I got from a surplus store. And I still have it, it's just in my retired box of gear. Um, I don't hate that thing either. It's actually really comfortable. I just have not really found a way to set it up the way that I like. And I decided to splurge on the Ferro Concepts Bison Belt, which is what you see right here. Um, and even though I don't wear it all the time, I definitely don't wear it when I'm out in the field. I've only done a couple patrols so far, but when I am actually out in the woods trying to get some training in, I don't necessarily wear this. I wear this more so on the range for training. I'm still undecided as to whether I would incorporate this into a patrol type of loadout or not, since I have actually been using an Alice LBE for a while, which even on that, I'm still kind of deciding what I like. So I'm, I'm new enough to this stuff that I don't necessarily know what's good, what's bad, or what I like or what I don't like. I'm still getting reps in. I'm still moving shit around. I'm still kind of figuring this stuff out. So if you're new to the channel and you're watching, just keep that in mind. I'm a relative noob. I'm into this stuff, I'm passionate about it, but I definitely don't have the kind of knowledge and expertise that some of the other people you might watch on YouTube do, so just know that as we get into this. So, like I said, this is the Ferro Concepts Bison Belt. Let's start over on the left. I have two Taco Pistol Mag pouches, which I actually, so here, let me just show you real quick. So for my M17, I do have these kind of more extended type mags. They carry 21. So when I bought my tacos, I got the extended one thinking that that's what I would need for this. And it, it's actually too long. So I already fucked up and I got the wrong pistol mag pouches. So what I ended up doing was actually stuffing cotton balls down in there to take up some of the space. These stop on the cotton balls when I stuff them down there. Um, so far I haven't had any issues with like pieces of cotton getting stuck on rounds or whatnot. So I don't know if that's a consideration or not, but right now uh, my pistol mags are a little bit jerry-rigged. Now moving over one spot from the taco pistol mags, I have a double AR mag pouch, which I just recently put back on here. I actually scooted the dump pouch over just a little bit so that it's overlapping my IFAC. I guess I'll show you that now. So I've got the taco mag pouches for my pistol. I've got a double stack AR mag pouch here on the side. Now the reason I have this on here is because my chest rig only carries four up front. And I would like to have six up front, but, but because I'm on a budget and I'm trying to maximize what I do have, I have this here so that I can have six on my body and one in the gun. So at least having a full, combat load of ammo. Um, I've got a USMC issue surplus dump pouch that I actually bought from ODGG LLC, Mr. Monkey Man up there in the PNW. Thank you. Um, this is the Ferro Concepts Roll One IFAC, which I'll take the innards out of here after I get through the rest of it and we'll look at the medical stuff last. But this is my IFAC. It sits on the small of my back and it's just like a it's like a tootsie roll type setup you just open it and pull it out so moving over i've got a little glove clip um i've had some issues hanging gloves from kit in the past i actually did a, a tq demonstration training thing you can see it in my uh range day with zert video um, I had this hanging from my chest rig. They actually got in the way when I went to put a TQ on my leg. So I moved them from the chest rig to the belt. Um, I have not trained with it enough to really know if I want to keep these hanging from my belt. I don't know if it's good or bad or whatnot, but as of right now, they're hanging from my belt. Here, 
I have a radio pouch. It's actually from a company called Set Gear, uh, which I, I used to work in film and TV. And so uh, I had a belt similar to this for when I was a grip. But instead of tactical stuff all over it, it was rolls of tape and <laughs> tool pouches with clamps and channel locks and all the kind of stuff that you need to do rigging for lights. But anyway, I moved this from my grip belt to my tactical pistol belt. Um, I'll give it a rattle can job soon so that it matches with this a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, this is not a tactical piece of kit. Uh, this came from something else, but it does the job. Also, I've got the stubby boy on here for team comms. Um, I'm going to do a video. I don't know how soon, but eventually I want to do a video about team comms. Uh, and we'll go over some of the considerations for comsec and msec. That's communication security and emissions security. The stubby boy antenna on my Baofeng that I have here is specifically for MSEC. You wanna keep your RF signature as small as possible and a stubby boy antenna is gonna help you do that. And then last but not least, I have a Safari Land 63 something, I don't even know. I thought I had ordered the waist height one but they sent me a drop leg so either I fucked it up or they fucked it up, I don't know. But gave it a little bit of a rattle can job so that it matches the rest of my stuff. Inside it, I carry a SIG M17 with a Hollow Sun 507C and a Surefire X300U light on it. I like this gun. Actually, I like it a lot. Uh, it has yet to go off by itself and it has yet to blow my pork and beans off. So let's hope it stays that way. And, uh, for all of you Glock fanboys, uh, I carry a Glock 43X EDC, so I'm not a complete traitor to the Glock fandom. Now, I usually have bongo ties, which I rave about these. I've talked about them on the live stream and in other videos. I'll actually show you. So I've had these on here for almost a year, retaining that holster in place so that it doesn't slide up and down the belt. Now, Obviously they're broken, so you might be thinking, well, why the hell would I put rubber bands on here? Um, these rubber bands are actually very strong, very robust, um, and they've lasted about a year with a decent bit of use at the range and stuff. So I'm sure there might be some better solutions for keeping it from sliding up and down, um, but this is the field expedient way that I've been using, and it took almost a year before they broke. So, so that's about it. We'll work our way back. I've got a Safari Land 63 something for my SIG M17. I have a off-brand radio pouch to hold my Baofeng with a stubby boy antenna so that I'm keeping my RF signature small should I be using comms in a team setting. I've got some gloves. I've got a dump pouch. Underneath the dump pouch, I've got my IFAC. I have a double AR mag pouch, getting me to a full combat load of six on me and one in the gun. And then I've got my taco pistol mag pouches, which are too long, but I've modified them to work. Um, without further ado, let's finish this video up by going into the IFAC. So when you pull the Ferro Concepts Roll One IFAC, out of here. This is what it looks like. And it just opens up like that. Now, what do I have in here? I have, um, I've added some things. I've added a lighter. So I've got a backup way to make fire. It fits, so I put it in there. I have, here, I'm gonna set this on the ground. So this is what the Ferro Concepts Roll One IFAC looks like when you pull it out and open it up. In here, I've added some things. I've added some extra tape. I've added some Tylenol. I've added a plastic card. 
um, which I learned this on the fire department. You can use a credit card or any kind of piece of plastic as uh, an improvised chest seal if you just tape it on three sides. Um, I think what actually works better than a card like this is actually the packaging to some of this stuff. So any kind of plastic, piece of plastic will work um, as a field expedient austere chest seal should you use up all the chest seals you do have. So let me see, I've got a roll of, I've got an ace bandage in here. I've got North American Rescue S rolled gauze. I've got quick clot combat gauze, vacuum packed and Z folded. This is a hemostatic dressing, so it's got stuff in there that's gonna help your blood clot. I've got a lighter in here, just as an extra. And then this is the fun stuff. We've got a TCCC card. So should you ever have to actually do a trauma assessment on somebody, you can fill this out, pass them on to higher care, and the paramedic or whatever advanced life support unit or entity, whatever that you give them to, will know what you did and what's going on with your patient. We have an NPA. NPA stands for nasopharyngeal airway. Um, this you lube up with this jelly here and you stick right down the nose into the throat um, and it helps people breathe if they're coughing up blood and shit like that. And then of course we've got some more quick clot and we have two, are there two here? Yeah, two hyphen chest seals. Um, so like I was saying earlier about using a credit card, what's actually better than a credit card is actually this packaging. So let's say you had somebody with a sucking chest wound with an exit wound. You'd stick one on the front, you'd stick one on the back. And then if there were any other wounds, like if you had multiple, you could use the packaging that these come in along with some tape. Uh, duct tape might actually be better, but or flex tape even. So you've got two chest seals here, right? For entry and exit wounds. Well, you stick those on and if you need more, you can actually use this packaging that it comes in as an improvised one with some tape. So anyway, guys, that's the innards of my IFAC right now. I do have a tourniquet as well. I need more than one. Here is a tourniquet. I've done some training with this. You can see it's kind of frayed. Um, I think they say if you use a tourniquet for training, you should retire it and use it only for training. Uh, right now, this is the only one I have, so I definitely need to get some more. go. That will insert right back into the little shell. And this little tab here, like I just showed you, you want to keep staged towards the exit. I actually kind of leave it sort of sticking out like this. I'll pull this tight. And then there you go. That's the tab you're going to pull open it up, pull it out, quick deployment of your IFAC. So anyway guys, that's just what I got going on for my pistol belt right now. I hope all you gearheads out there who enjoy looking at this kind of stuff, enjoy it. I'm gonna be trying to do more gear videos on the channel because I know a lot of you really like going into the gear stuff. So I will be doing some more standalone videos dedicated just to different pieces of kit. I'll do one on my chest rig, I'll do one on my plate carrier, and I'll definitely do one on my rucksack here soon. But the rucksack one I'll probably take out in the field and we'll do more of a demonstration with. So anyway guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Wired Tight, and remember, keep your head on a swivel, keep your shit wired tight, and we'll talk at you later.